Before we begin, let's look at the concept of oxygen cascade. The oxygen cascade describes the progressive decline in oxygen partial pressure as oxygen moves from the atmosphere or inspired gas to the mitochondria. The oxygen cascade begins with inspired air carrying an oxygen partial pressure of around 150 mm of mercury at sea level. As this air reaches the alveoli, the partial pressure drops to approximately 100 mm of mercury due to dilution by carbon dioxide and water vapor. Oxygen then diffuses into arterial blood, where its partial pressure is normally about 95 mm of mercury. When oxygen-rich blood reaches systemic capillaries, tissues extract oxygen reducing the partial pressure to roughly 40 mm of mercury. Finally, within the mitochondria, oxygen tension falls to just 1 to 10 mm of mercury, where it drives cellular respiration. This stepwise decline in oxygen tension ensures efficient delivery of oxygen due to the partial pressure gradient from inspired air to the mitochondria. It also explains the presence of the alveolar arterial gradient which is the topic of our video. So AA gradient is the difference between the alveolar oxygen partial pressure and the arterial oxygen partial pressure. It is used to assess the efficiency of oxygen transfer from the alveoli to the blood, and helps differentiate the causes of hypoxemia which we will see later. As we can see, the alveolar arterial gradient is dependent on two variables. PaO2 is a direct parameter measure by the ABG analyzer. We discussed that in our previous video. PaO2 with the capital A however is a derived parameter and is calculated using the equation called alveolar gas equation. In the equation, FiO2 is the fraction of oxygen in the air the patient is breathing. It is 0.21 for room air, or higher if they're on supplemental oxygen. Next, PATM is the atmospheric pressure, which is about 760 mm of mercury at sea level but drops at higher altitudes. P water is water vapor pressure inside the lung which is always 47 mm of mercury due to body temperature. PaCO2 is the arterial partial pressure of carbon dioxide directly measured by ABG analyzer. It represents the carbon dioxide diffusing into the alveoli from the blood, which displaces oxygen and lowers alveolar oxygen levels. Finally, the respiratory exchange ratio R represents the ratio of carbon dioxide exhaled to oxygen inhaled at the level of the lungs. Under normal physiological conditions, this ratio is approximately 0.8. At the cellular level, this means that for every molecule of oxygen consumed during metabolism, approximately 0.8 molecules of carbon dioxide are produced. For quick clinical assessment when using room air at sea level, we can further simplify the equation. The normal alveolar arterial oxygen gradient typically ranges between 5 to 15 mm of mercury in healthy young adults breathing room air. The math given here is self-explanatory. As people get older, the AA gradient naturally increases due to age-related changes in lung function. A more precise age-adjusted formula suggests the upper limit of normal should be less than age by 4 4 mm of mercury. For example, a 60-year-old would have an upper limit of approximately 14 mm of mercury. In older adults, the gradient may be slightly elevated with values up to 20 to 25 mm of mercury sometimes being considered acceptable. When a patient breathes 100% oxygen, both alveolar and arterial partial pressures increase dramatically, and while we would expect the AA gradient to be maintained at 5 to 15 mm of mercury, it instead increases to about 50 to 100 mm of mercury due to several key physiological mechanisms. The primary factor is absorption atelectasis caused by nitrogen washout from alveoli, leading to alveolar collapse and shunting of blood flow. Additionally, the suppression of hypoxic pulmonary vasoconstriction allows more blood flow to poorly ventilated areas. Thus, 
the arterial partial pressure of oxygen is much lower than expected. Now let's look at how we assess hypoxia using AA gradient. In the previous video, we examined the five main underlying causes of hypoxemia which were hypoventilation, VQ mismatch, shunt, diffusion impairment and low inspired oxygen. Using the AA gradient, we can further categorize these causes into two broad groups as hypoxemia with normal AA gradient and hypoxemia with widened AA gradient. Hypoxemia with a normal AA gradient occurs when a patient has low blood oxygen levels but maintains normal oxygen transfer efficiency between the alveoli and bloodstream. This clinical scenario indicates that the lungs themselves are functioning properly, and the hypoxemia stems from problems either with breathing mechanics or the oxygen content of inspired air. So the two primary causes of hypoxemia with a normal AA gradient are hypoventilation and low inspired oxygen. In hypoventilation, the patient isn't moving enough air through their lungs, leading to elevated carbon dioxide levels which displaces oxygen in the alveoli, reducing alveolar oxygen. The key feature here is that while both alveolar and arterial partial pressure of oxygen decrease proportionally, their difference remains normal because the lung's oxygen exchange capacity remains intact. Common examples include opioid overdose, where respiratory drive is depressed, or neuromuscular conditions like myasthenia gravis that weaken breathing muscles. When hypoxemia is caused by low inspired oxygen, less oxygen enters alveoli reducing the alveolar oxygen. Hence, the arterial oxygen content is also reduced. Despite this drop in oxygen, the AA gradient stays normal because the lungs themselves function properly, efficiently transferring whatever oxygen is available into the blood. Such a scenario can occur in high altitude where oxygen content in the air is low, or with faulty oxygen delivery systems in ventilator delivering hypoxic gas. Now with widened AA gradient, there is impaired oxygen transfer between the alveoli and pulmonary capillaries which causes reduced arterial oxygen despite adequate alveolar oxygen partial pressure. It occurs when the lungs cannot properly oxygenate blood despite adequate ventilation and inspired oxygen. This widened gradient reflects one of three fundamental physiological disturbances which are ventilation perfusion mismatch, shunt physiology, or diffusion impairment. VQ mismatch is most common cause of widened AA gradient hypoxemia. It occurs when some lung regions receive ventilation without perfusion or perfusion without ventilation. The overall lung has areas with VQ ratios that are either too high or too low, reducing gas exchange efficiency. In COPD with significant airway obstruction, such as in chronic bronchitis, there is reduced ventilation in some areas of the lung while blood flow may still be present, leading to a low VQ ratio. This results in blood passing through alveoli that cannot properly oxygenate it, leading to hypoxemia. Whereas in severe emphysema, alveolar wall destruction can lead to a high VQ ratio because alveoli are hyperinflated and receive more ventilation. Despite this, the alveolar wall is destroyed which impairs the surface area for gas exchange leading to low oxygen in the blood. Another classic example of high VQ is pulmonary embolism where blood flow obstruction creates well-ventilated but underperfused areas. A shunt occurs when blood flows through the lungs without undergoing gas exchange, leading to hypoxemia that doesn't fully correct with supplemental oxygen. This can happen through anatomical shunts, such as right-to-left cardiac shunts, where blood bypasses the lungs entirely. More commonly, physiological shunts arise when alveoli are unable to oxygenate blood due to disease such as in pneumonia where alveoli are filled with pus or blood, ARDS where diffuse alveolar damage and edema impair gas exchange, or atelectasis where collapsed alveoli from mucus plugs or poor ventilation prevent oxygenation. In these cases, blood passes by non-functional alveoli, effectively shunting, 
deoxygenated blood back into circulation creating a a gradient of more than 30 mm of mercury. With a a gradient hypoxemia due to these causes show minimal or no improvement in PaO2 with 100% oxygen unless the underlying cause is treated. Diffusion impairment occurs when oxygen struggles to cross the alveolar capillary membrane efficiently, typically due to either thickening of the membrane or reduced blood transit time through pulmonary capillaries. In conditions like pulmonary fibrosis, the interstitial tissue thickens creating a greater distance for oxygen molecules to travel between alveoli and blood. Similarly, in pulmonary hypertension, dilated capillaries and increased blood flow velocity reduce the time available for oxygen diffusion even if the membrane itself remains intact. The alveolar arterial gradient widens slightly at rest but expands significantly during exertion when increased cardiac output further shortens capillary transit time. Unlike a shunt, diffusion impairment responds partially to supplemental oxygen, though improvement may be limited under high metabolic demand. Finally, let's create an algorithm to assess hypoxia using AA gradient. When hypoxemia is suspected, the first step is to confirm low oxygen levels in arterial blood, typically defined as a partial pressure of oxygen below 80 mm of mercury while breathing room air. Once confirmed, the next step is to calculate the alveolar arterial oxygen gradient, which helps determine whether the hypoxemia stems from a lung-related problem or an issue outside the lungs. If the gradient is normal, we check the partial pressure of carbon dioxide to determine if the hypoxia is due to hypoventilation or reduced inspired oxygen. If the PaCO2 is normal, the hypoxia is due to low inspired oxygen concentration which can be easily corrected by supplemental oxygen. If the PaCO2 is raised, it could mean hypoventilation or type 2 respiratory failure. In such case managing underlying cause is necessary though supplemental oxygen can be helpful too. If the gradient is widened, a 100% oxygen is administered and the ABG is repeated. If the oxygen level rises after 100% oxygen administration, the issue is likely a ventilation perfusion mismatch, as seen in conditions like chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, ARDS, or pneumonia. If the oxygen level remains low, a shunt is probable, such as in severe pneumonia, severe acute respiratory distress syndrome and cyanotic heart disease. If oxygen levels drop during exercise, a diffusion limitation, such as pulmonary fibrosis, may be the cause.